Good morning. There's a lot that uh, happened last week. In fact, just this past Saturday was NEO Day in China. NEO is the fourth largest uh, vehicle company in the world right now. So why does NEO, NEO Day matter? Well, because NEO sits in the middle of the largest EV market in the world, namely China, and announced some remarkable plans and technologies. Its ET7 sedan was the star on Saturday, and it boasts many features, including a range of over 300 miles with its standard 70 kilowatt hour battery pack. But most critically, it announced a new 150 kilowatt hour solid state battery pack. This new technology boasts energy density about 50% over current battery tech, and uh, that car will have about 625 miles of range. So much for solid state being five years away. They expect to put this out in 2022. The ET7 users also get free lifetime warranty and power swap benefits. Neo is doing this cool thing that Shai Agassi tried to do over a decade ago with Better Place. What you do is you drive your car into what looks like a little car wash, park there, and then these robots come underneath your car, unscrew your battery assembly, slide that away from the car, a new charged battery pack moves underneath the car, robots bolt it, you drive off three minutes, as fast as getting gasoline. They announced they've already done uh, about 1.5 million battery swaps to date. And each of these new stations now can perform up to 312 swaps per day. So that's why Neo Day was so important. It's kind of an interesting view into tomorrow. Sticking with EVs, Germany recorded over 43,000 new EV registrations in December. That's 660% uh, over December of the prior year. Uh, for the year, they sold in Germany a total of 194,000 EVs. In total, 13.5% of all newly registered vehicles in Germany this year have an electric drive. Moving from cars to wind and hydrogen, it was announced last week that Orsted, Siemens, Gamesa, ITM Power, and Element Energy garnered 5 million euro funding uh, to pilot a combined wind turbine and electrolyzer system on the offshore platform. What they'll do is they'll take seawater, apply the electrolyzer to it, turn that into hydrogen, and ship that hydrogen to shore. The idea basically being to utilize that wind turbine as, as fully as possible. Now let's discuss solar energy for a minute. A decade ago, the U.S. Department of Energy launched its SunShot initiative, which was aimed at reducing the installed cost of solar power by 2020 to a dollar per megawatt for utility scale PV systems, a buck 25 for commercial rooftop, and a buck 50 for resi rooftop. The utility scale targets were hit. We're well under a dollar there, but commercial and resi didn't. Commercial generally is in the mid $2 range and resi hovers right around three. Why the huge disparity? Well, there's economy of scale, but the, the toughest nut to crack has been the permitting interconnection and inspection. Costs have come down there by about 50%, but they've been more reluctant to move than some of the others because among other things, there are so many different permitting jurisdictions and uh, that's caused, you might call it, transactional friction. That's difficult to overcome. You've got to move government agencies. Bloomberg Research found it can take over two weeks to submit the permits for resi projects after a sale close, and then municipalities take on average a month to approve. So it can take up to 120 days from time of contract signature to operational effectiveness. We should look to Germany in this area. They've been pushing this pretty hard, and oh, almost uh, over five years ago, developed a one-stop permitting, where essentially you go in and you get these things really fast. With COVID, some municipalities, especially in California, have now done remote digital permitting. So there's some hope for this in the future. And then finally, moving to legislation. Uh, Massachusetts just passed strong climate legislation that calls for 2050 net zero greenhouse gas emissions limits. So they're joining other states such as New Mexico, California, Hawaii, etc. It sets statewide targets that need to be achieved every five years and also calls specifically for offshore wind total of now 5,600 megawatts. It also establishes the criteria in the statute defining environmental justice populations, those populations who have been most disadvantaged by emissions and pollution. Finally, the Commonwealth mandated that all new cars sold will be electric by 2025. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.